meet with Logan Paul came about for a series of quirks and coincidences, really, because like Logan Paul, of course, I'm aware of who he is. He's uh, like a crossover f phenom. That's what someone said he is. He's a YouTube phenom. Um, firstly, I didn't know this, but he's sort of manager type figure. I don't know if he formalizes things in his life as tightly as you're my manager and has a business meeting and a contract, but the person that was functioning in that way, a fellow called Andre, Andre, who's referred to in the podcast frequently as a sort of a mysterious shapeshifter, mover between dimensions type character. Well, this side of the table, we're exploring it more, aren't we, Andre? <laughs> we've got some flowing garments. We've got some mysticism. We're a couple of little Rasputin monks sat Rasputin. on there. <laughs> so, like, I'd run into his girlfriend in a obviously vegan restaurant called Crossroads. It's delicious, by the way, and where I'd been unofficially anointed. Like his, like his girlfriend and another woman came up to me, this uh, Andre's girlfriend. Like they were wearing, in my mind, I don't know, you know sometimes how you, um, in your memory, you sort of edit things to make it more convenient and cinematic. Well, as I remember it, they were wearing like blue flowing gowns, like saris. And they came over to me, and this bit definitely did happen, anointed me with sort of gold leaf on my own forehead. So there was a moment where some people were coming and striping me down the middle of my head with gold leaf, which is the sort of thing I always anticipate happening. And when it actually does happen, I think, good, this is what should be happening to me in a vegan restaurant. Thank God someone's come over and anointed me with gold leaf. And then like, you know, they were really lovely and then off they went. And I thought, this is, I obviously read too much into it, you know, being a sort of a pseudo spiritualist living in between dimensions type guy. I was like, oh, this is an anointment. This means I've got great responsibility. Anyway, Kylie is in the back of this vehicle now. She's friends with that person, Andre, and arranged for Logan Paul to do my podcast Under the Skin, which took place in Hollywood, Los Angeles. Yeah. You're famous in a new way. You're YouTube famous. You're a type of famous that 10 years ago didn't exist. I'm in my 40s. Like, I've come through conventional media, mm. but, like, I know I've the seen it. People. I've seen it all. You've seen that stuff. I got to say, I got to say, I'm a fan. I'm, oh, a, right. I'm a fan. Like, this is getting more relaxing for me by no, the no, second. No, no, tr no. Trust me. I'm, I, when Andre brought your name up, I was like, it'd be an honor to sit down with him. And now, I'm on my way to his... What I can only understand are some sort of mad frat house mansion of content providers. In my mind, it's half a dozen millionaires sat around smoking weed and eating potato chips and making videos and laughing at each other's farts. It might not just be that because they're potentially, you know, like they're obviously very innovative and talented young men. And when I met Logan Paul, what I thought, thought was, oh, this is, even though when someone gets famous in a novel way, you think, this isn't famous, it should be from gramophone records. Really, the world is continually changing and the type of stars that it sort of throws up, I've noticed that there are some archetypal qualities. When I was interviewing, I thought, yeah, he's a little bit like Elvis or a little bit like Eminem. You know, sort of like a kind of, he's wholesome and like sort of decent and like an inquiring and sort of bright. And then I watched much more of his content after I met him, like video where he's like, uh, I suppose, uh, like I said, that call out cussing video for his brother. It's his brother called Jake, is right, isn't it? He's also super famous. You know this already because you're connected to this world. Well, I watched some of the videos, they were really funny and self aware. He is actually very funny, and you can see why he's successful. Anyway, so I met him, I really, really like him. He's very interested in the negative impact of fame. He's very interested in mental health. He's very interested in unstitching himself from the material world while still having objectives and uh, goals within it, which is complication that like most of us face and now I'm on it my way to this sort of millionaire fart filled frat house of marijuana I feel like there's not gonna be enough furniture that's what I'm anticipating like that there's not like you need to like they need a woman's touch this place that's what I should say I might go in there like Mrs. Doubtfire <laughs> come on boys let's get some curtains up drapes let's get some drapes up Put some like put bowls of potpourri around the place, which they'll probably fucking smoke. <laughs> I 
surprised. I was surprised by Logan Paul because I thought he had a, like, a lot of warmth and sweetness and self-reflection. Like I always feel that people that are successful. My assumption with anyone that's successful is that they're basically going to be an asshole. That they're going to be just sort of a glacial, indefatigable personality that isn't porous enough to be present. He's very present and inquiring. You get used to if you've been around famous people for a long time, and I have. You get used to dealing with that. You just think, oh, you're a famous person. You're going to be sort of cubic and. It, and unapproachable, I'll just be ready for that. But actually then you meet people and they're generally lovely, given that we're all born and we're all gonna die and all of the basics, you know. Anyway, he was, he was surprising in these in sweet and open and inquiring bright. Here's the ass is, uh, I haven't done a statue in the backyard. I saw that. Do you want it? Well, yes. <laughs> like, wait, really? Well, I think I do, just because it's, you're offering me it. It seems to, I mean, it is very big. Which one, mate? The, the big one. No, I have to tell <laughs> What's happened to it? What? Is it cursed? No, it's not. Oh, it's not, it's not. What's happened to this Buddha? Nothing, nothing's happened to it. I just don't want to do it. Is, is there a subplot to this? <laughs> is this boy concealing a subplot? Because I know he's a prankster. <laughs> What's he doing? It seems like everything's soft to par. Let him take the Buddha. Okay, fair enough. Buddha. So he wants the Buddha. No, that's a like, lovely gift. It's one of the most pretty and amazing. And I accept. Thank you. Dude, really? You're so kind. Yeah, so, like, because, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the Buddha, you beautiful young man. For giving me the biggest Buddha I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, funny enough, when I came into your garden earlier, I was like, wow, oh, that box of me, and I saw this. My eye fell upon this mighty, joyful Buddha. I didn't imagine that I would soon be organising the No way, thing. no way. <laughs> but it's a beautiful thing. Thank That's you. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate you.